Hey, it's all Metal Maniacs here. We are again for another episode from the series of 80s essential albums. And uh, after I have been asked a few times by various subscribers of our channel, here I am today collecting the 10 essential albums from the 80s Greek metal scene. Um, a scene that always delivered uh, quality music throughout the years, even though they are a relatively small country and uh, a country that, just like Malta, most, is mostly regarded for the history, the weather, the great beaches. But we are not here for that. Um, like I always say, get comfortable since we are going to speak about Greece. I have prepared some Uzo over here, as you can see, to fuel this video. I hope it doesn't affect my overall judgment and I'll be able to at least finish this video. So without further ado, let's go. For joining us again for this video if you are uh, new here the aim of this channel is to review albums festivals suggest bands delve in the cultural aspect of heavy metal in general and more so if you're interested in this content please consider supporting us by uh, subscribing liking and sharing our videos on social media and uh, i'm glad you're still with us for this video like i said today i'm focusing on those essential albums that were published by uh, Greek metal bands in the 80s. As always, I will be focusing on full-length albums only. And uh, this was the biggest challenge I found whilst compiling the list for this video. Full-length albums were a bit scarce during the 80s decade from the scene. Um, on the other hand, there were tens of, uh, if not hundreds, of demos being dished out by various bands. And this, this can be attributed to two factors. One is the budget factor. Demos could have been recorded in a garage setting and in the end they would cost very little to produce. Considering that most of these bands were in their late teens or early 20s, this would be the obvious choice for them unless they would have already acquired a deal with some record label. And this brings me to the second factor, record labels, which by the looks of it, never gave the due importance to heavy metal as a genre and therefore it was difficult to get the backing to record, promote and distribute a full length record. I'm referring always obviously to the Greek scene. One of the very few that did was named Molon Lave Records or Molon Lave Records by George Osmak, which is a label which produced mostly thrash and death metal bands but is per popular opinion of the metal has that experienced those times, it was also very helpful for the Greek metal scene in general. Um, in the 70s, there was no hint of a metal heart pounding in the axles of those days, but uh, the first serious attempts were made by two well known Greek uh, psychedelic hard rock progressive bands uh, like Aphrodite's Child and uh, Socrates. Especially the latter band was the closest thing in the 70s to heavy music. And uh, since we are not here to speak about the 70s rock, uh, let's jump to 1982 and to what is considered uh, the year that gave birth to the first heavy metal uh, album by a Greek band. And this was uh, North Coming by the band Northwind, released by Vertigo Records. And when you read Vertigo records, to me at least one band comes to mind and that is definitely Black Sabbath. And the music here relates a lot with that type of sound. I would add that it is a mix of 70s proto metal, early Sabbath, 70s priest with vocals similar to Don McCafferty from the Scottish band 
Nazareth. The warm production, those hard rockish melodies really define this record as one of the best to come out from that decade. Five years after this release, having already built a respectful reputation in Greece, Northwind returned with the successor uh, of North Common, DLP Mythology, which was issued under the EMI label. Their sound was more metalized, the lyrics completely changed direction, totally dedicated uh, to the Greek mythology uh, on this record. But the first one, North Coming, uh, North Coming was definitely a pillar of uh, the Greek scene. And my favorite track from this album is Kick the World. Moving on to 1984 with the self-titled album by Vice Human, released with uh, Poly Avlos Records. Uh, the band was established by Nick Papakostas, accompanied by Kostas Manopoulos, initially on bass, Nick Geriaris on drums, and uh, was completed with Akis Thomas, who took uh, on the bass when Manopoulos took on his normal position, the one of a guitarist. Uh, for a period of time, they had songs with... Uh, lyrics in Greek, but their entire, at least known, discography is in English. This record also has some hints of uh, Black Sabbath, but it definitely has a faster tempo, more reminiscent of early traditional bands like Riot, for example. I even hear some similarities to Heavy Load in some of the parts. There are some interesting guitar solos on this record, although the overall production doesn't really help the music, even though it, is, uh, it isn't that bad as some of the reviews I have read throughout the years. Sometimes people forget that this is a record from almost 40 years ago, with all the limitations, both technological and financial, of the time. After this record, uh, the band went on a hiatus and remained inactive between 1985 and 2003, although according to them they never actually disbanded throughout these 18 years. Favorite tracks on here are uh, Can You Feel The Night and uh, I Long To Kill You Beast. Third album from the list coming from 1985 is Made In Hell by the band Flames, released with FM Records. Uh, one of the pioneering Greek bands from the more extreme style of heavy metal. This might actually be the first thrash metal album from this country. When I hear this record, I can easily see the guys from, for example, Rotting Christ and uh, Varatron really worshipping this record as young teenage metalheads. The tracks here have a perfect balance of uh, savagery and catchiness. There is somewhat of a Teutonic trash vibe going on and uh, in reality the sound in this album could not be actually defined as trash metal as we know it today. But back in 1985, it was certainly thrashing. It's fast, technical in many ways, even melodic very often, as I said. I could say that it uh, mostly reminds me of early Venom. Flames didn't continue in, in the same way over the next few years, although the albums that followed are somewhat thrashier, actually, with some good moments, but they're not as good for me personally as this one. I would definitely say that Made in Hell is one of the best releases from the Greek metal scene in general. Nigel Fox, guitarist and uh, vocalist on this record, will eventually move on to other bands, which I will also be mentioning later on in this list, so stay tuned to hear which other bands he was involved in. Favorite track on here would be Curtain Call. Jumping towards 1986, slowly moving uh, throughout the 80s, as these, uh, this list I made is in chronological order from the earliest to the latest record released in 1980. And as I said, from 1986 we find the self-titled debut album by the band Vavel, released with famous music. Now veering towards a style which I tend to associate more with the Greek scene, that is the power epic style of heavy metal. The kind that reminds me actually of uh, Warlord. These five skilled musicians managed to compose eight tracks with unique power, uh, unique aesthetics that perfectly capture that Hellenic spirit I often witnessed during gigs and concerts I have attended over there. And this actually being one of them, it's from the Up The Hammers Festival 
in Athens, Greece. Although it was reissued in 2003, an original and decent copy of this record will cost you quite a bit nowadays. To everyone's disappointment though, apparently due to bad management and the lack of interest uh, of the record companies, an issue I mentioned obviously in the intro, this was the last effort of Vavel for quite a number of years. Some of their unreleased tracks from the late 80s were eventually released in 2003 on the album The Second Death. At least the heritage left by this band will remain for all to witness and enjoy. Favorite track on here is Fight for Metal. So the next three records all come from 1987 and the first one from these three is the album First Attack by the band Spitfire released with EMI Greece. Possibly one of the very few records from the 80s seen to be released on a somewhat of a major label, so, uh, so to speak. And you can immediately see the benefits of this from the quality of the production. Feels much more, um, feels much more powerful actually. Spitfire plays a blend of many styles. The singer has a great, incredible vocal range. He reminds me of many top singers like Dio, Tate, Dickinson and a bit of Halford at times but with a personal style that can make make him distinguish from other other vocalists basically. His pronunciation is also surprisingly good for someone who doesn't have the English language as a mother tongue. The guitars are amazing following the trends of the mid 80s metal groups and even the songwriting doesn't push any boundaries, I mean you can kind of feel that you have listened to the stuff before, yet it is done so well that you will still have a great time listening to this record. Uh, they were uh, basically perfect students of the great groups of the past like uh, New Wave of British Heavy Metal bands, Ernie Queens Reich, Heavy Load, etc. Actually the first time I listened to this album, I remember the album Seven Star by Black Sabbath came to mind. It has that kind of melodic yet riff based approach. Unfortunately not long after the recording the singer Dinos Kostakis had a terrible motorcycle accident and went into coma for two years and never performed ever after. He eventually passed away in 2016. Favorite tracks on here are Lady of the Night, Explosion, and Walk Away, which is one of the best power ballads you will ever hear. The second record from 1987 is called uh, Fantasy by a band named Mental Powers, released with uh, Interdealer Records. Uh, Mental Powers seems to be a totally unknown band to a certain extent even in Greece. They play a style similar to hard rock melodic metal and the 1986 LP Fantasy is the ultimate obscurities of the 80s. Practically, uh, practically a one-man band, this record features the impressive guitar work of Ramos Alexiou, who handles the rhythm, lead guitar, bass, piano, drums, synths, sound effects, and whose guitar style records the likes of uh, Michael Schenker, Gary Moore, Richard Blackmore, Manstein, etc. The other member of the band covers the vocals part although he inevitably takes a secondary role in this recording. It's a pity that the broader public didn't have the chance to listen to the beautiful compositions on here especially because the guitar performance is one of the highest order. Um, if I had to choose a favorite track on here that would be the opening track throw the dice. The third and last record from 1987 is Life LTD by the band Thanatos Inc. released with FM Records. Nigel Fox, as I mentioned earlier, after leaving Flames formed Thanatos Inc. They had nothing in common with the Dutch band Thanatos, of course, with the emerging from the Netherworld LP uh, they had released. So in 1987, with great delay for the Greek Standards once again we had the first speed trash metal outfit with an official album which was in the vein of early Metallica and uh, Flotsam and Jetsam etc. And it were more of uh, more or less the vehicle of the personal ambition of Nigel Fox 
The other three members of the band had also adopted pseudonyms as most speed trash bands were doing at the time. Life LTD features eight compositions that apart from the skillful guitar playing of Fox uh, was a more than a satisfactory attempt towards this mix of speed and trash. The production is a lot better than it was in Flames' albums. Not very good though as it buries some aspects of uh, Johnny's Superb drumming, the riffs and solos throughout the album are fast and complex, supported by the very technical um, drumming and uh, really thick bass lines. The songs are structured in an epic manner, building atmospheres and releasing plenty of emotions. This record is generally criticized with regards to the vocals, but although they definitely could be better, I don't think they are actually that bad. My favorite track on here is um, Aliens. Yes, I think that would be it. Off to 1988 now and in continuation of the previous album by Thanatos Inc. Uh, which were eventually forced to change their name because of their namesakes. Thanatos that I mentioned from uh, Holland and the band decided to change it to Nigel Fox's incorporated and subsequently became a trio after the departure of Fabian the singer who decided to follow a classical career. But first things first, the album title is War of the Gods, released with FM Record. Just like on Flames' album, Nigel handled the vocals once again after the already mentioned departure of the singer. Strange as it might seem, at first War of the Gods is, a, is an inspired blend of thrash metal and 80s power metal. The likes of Agent Steel, and not because of Gods is written with a Z in the end, and the Liege Lord that takes bold tangential dips into epic heavy metal whenever Fox saw fit. Yes, the guitar tone is even a bit wimpy, even for power speed metal in 1988. But if you consider the ambition on display versus the fidelity of it all, it is easy to appreciate how much of a bold step this album was. I want to give a special mention to my favorite track here, which is Treason, a nine minute epic with synths and uh, acoustic guitars that explodes into more mid paced material that reminds me of bands like Omen or Manila Road with uh, quite possibly Nigel's best vocal moments on this track as well. Although this is not exactly a masterpiece, those who dig the mid-80s production values and blinding speed will almost certainly find something here to relate to, like I did basically. And uh, last two records on this list, and both of them are from 1989. The first one is called uh, Shoot Them Higher, by the band Rust, released uh, independently and eventually distributed in Greece by Seagull Records. Uh, after two years of existence in the underground and with um, apparently some of the best and most intense live shows at the time, Rust, a powerful quartet from Athens, released what would be their first and only LP uh, as a private self-financed album in a very small quantity. This record is well worth looking for as it is a blend of new wave of British heavy metal and uh, more tradition, traditional European heavy metal bands such as Accept and Running Wild. The track Blind Fighter brings to mind Screaming for Vengeance or Defenders of the Faith era Judas Priest. The, the track That Look is a nice power ballad, Rust is another highlight for sure, catchy riffs and uh, plenty of drive. The production is uh, wavering, the musicianship and attitude kind of punky, the vocals high pitched. The rhythm section generally is fast paced and uh, rather prominent. There are hard rock elements as well and the whole thing sounds like a trip back in time. One can easily see the band uh, clad in denim, leather and white sneakers rehearsing in a room full of uh, which find posters. In closing, my favorite track on here would be uh, the closer, the ending track on the record one more time. And uh, the next 1989 record is the self-titled debut 
by Exoriste released with EMI Records. The main man behind this band was Dimitris Katis. As far as I know, it is the uh, first al metal album in the Greek language, so bear with me with regards to the pronunciation of some of these tracks. Previous to the record, Katis had self-financed an instrumental symphonic rock record, which eventually paved the way for a break with EMI Greece, which led to the debut album of Exoristoi which more or less means exile in, uh, in Greek. The result, although quite unusual at times, is uh, in the end really great. Exoristoi composed uh, great epic metal songs like uh, Doxakai Timi, Glory and Honor, Sonora Pantu, Borders Everywhere, Tospati to Nikiti, The Sword of the Victor, uh, the title track Exoristoi, which gained the respect and the appreciation of Greek metal fans. The album also contains the ballad the Kano Mia FG, I Make a Wish, which was the only metal song that has ever hit the mainstream. The video clip of this track and the radio broadcasting of the song made Exoristoi quite a successful band in Greece. Unfortunately, the following releases, 19 and All Itrotis, which means The Redeemer, suffered from a not so good songwriting quality and a very bad distribution, as these LPs have become basically collector's items almost immediately after the release. Uh, Dimitris Katis, because of various reasons, gradually became the person the Greek metal media loved to hate, and soon the band was indeed exiled from the rest of the Greek metal world. Some of his more recent releases seem to never be found available in any record stores. Again, maybe some Greek friends care to clarify this or give us more info on this aspect. Uh, in conclusion, this is a bit of an odd record and it takes some listens to be able to absorb everything, but I kind of love the epic, proggish feel and those folky touches throughout and uh, there it is another journey has come to an end with some great records throughout which i really advise you to check out basically like in every video these albums tend to be quite obscure to the larger crowds but there is nothing like discovering new music and building of a somewhat of a relationship with these uh, sounds for me, it's, it is a feeling that fills me with so much satisfaction and through these videos, that is what I would like to transmit. Returning to the Greek scene, I have only great words to say about the passion and the that no compromise attitude of the fans and most of the bands in the underground scene, uh, a region where metal is truly uh, a religion. And uh, a reminder, obviously, to subscribe, click the bell, like our video and share it on social media. That would really help us out. Um, check out the affiliate links in the description below. If you buy through those uh, links, we get a small commission to no extra expense for you. Any product, not necessarily the one link, just as long as you access Amazon through one of those links. Um, anyways, I hope you found this information useful. Check out also our uh, videos, our other videos, plenty of subjects being tackled week after week. And uh, until the next one, stay safe and metal on. Cheers.